Thank you very much for joining us on your program viewpoint here on DBS television. Your program divided into two segments. The first part, which has to do with questions and answers, and the second part that has to do with debate. Nevertheless, uh, yesterday evening uh, it came out as a communique where the Minister of State, Secretary General at the Republic of at the Presidency of the Republic announced that uh, the first of May, that is a uh, Labor Day, and of course the twentieth of May, the National Day celebration has been annulled or cancelled. That notwithstanding, pending issues like the Garbo incidents and of course the coronavirus are the things are some of the things that we are going to be discussing in today's program. And of course, with us we have as guest again once more Mr. Weber Justin, who is a pedagogue. Good evening to you, Mr. Weber. Good evening, Vanessa. Good evening, Venasius. And Good thanks evening, for being, Thanks for being part of us again tonight. It's a pleasure being with you again. Manga Venasius, you're welcome. Thank you, Vanessa. Good evening and good evening to our viewers at home. Time for the first segment. Let's have a transition and we will be right back. Question number one with focus on the Garbo massacre. Are there possible consequences of the Garbo massacre to Cameroon? I begin with you, Mr. Weber. Yes. Yes. Man given issues? Yes, Vanessa, there are. Yes, there are. Question number two. Should responsibility for the killings be borne by only the military? If not, who? Mr. Weber. No. No. Mangaven issues? No, Vanessa, it should not be borne by the military. It should not be borne by the military. The third question, is this an eye-opener for other human rights abuses in the ongoing uh, crisis? I'll begin with you, Mangaven issues. Yes, Vanessa, it is an eye-opener. Yes, it is an eye-opener. And Mr. Weber? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. The fourth question for today, is there anything wrong with the government from with the government form of communication especially in the face of this crisis mr weber yes there is not only for that but for ever, nearly their whole governance mr weber and mange issues <laughs> yes vanessa there is something wrong all right yes there is something wrong those are their point of views as far as the questions are concerned now let us come back in a second to discover what they think about this through the debate I begin with Mr. Weber, who told us that yes, there are consequences of the Ngalbu incidents in Cameroon. Mr. Weber, what could possibly be those consequences in Cameroon? Thank you, Vanessa. The Ngalbu incidents is not new to anybody in Cameroon, maybe even worldwide. Since the 14th of February 2020, we have been living with this panic after that massacre. And surely, the massacre has been peculiar because it is not the first. But this time around, it is the first to have received the results of an investigation. All our investigations in our country are used to be opened, but never closed. This time around, we have had one which is closed, even though not in its totality. And so, the fact that these other results have come out, they instead open a wide door for more requests, for more pressure. We are all aware that before the commission was created, it was out of pressure. It was when the French president declared that he was going to put pressure, which he did, and the commission was created. After the commission, the creation of the, com the, the commission, after two months from the date of the commission cre creation, people waited for the result and they had no results until the very France had to intervene again. And the results are out, and we think that the very France is aware that that is not the only case of massacre in our country. We have so many of them. We would go back to count from Pinyin to Batibo to uh, Moyuka to Wum to uh, everywhere. There are so many way, so so many everywhere, and that have been seeking for the reaction of the government that is in place. If they could be doing this for every instance, many things would have happened. But unfortunately. 
Oh, luckily enough for us, this time around we have had results and we should be requesting for them to go down to investigate the other ones. Outside the question of more investigations, we look at the consequences of this report this that has report. come out. Mm -hmm. We find that in the report, which is very, very partial, because many things have been put aside, no mention of any number is made in the report. We don't know how many people they discovered that we are massacred. Nobody has mentioned that. The person who was picked for giving information in the mosque, his whereabouts is unknown, and no account because he would have been part of this very report. Well, some people have told us that that report is partial, that the details are somewhere. But why not give the detailed report for everything to be public? The other thing is that the final decisions, when you look at the final decisions, you ask many questions. When the government thinks that the people on Garbo need but a military base, a camp to be created in Garbo, unfortunately for them, the president of the Wimbom Cultural and Development Association reacted promptly and has declared that they do not need it. The people on Garbo need pipe on water. They need electricity. They need health facilities. They need good roads. And I don't think a military base will be of necessity in the Ngarbo area. If it is a necessity, then it should be created in every place where there has been a, ma a massacre. It should not only be in Ngarbo. So th those are the consequences of what is going to be happening to Cameroon. That aside, the site of trauma, nobody is talking about that. What is the, the accompaniment that has been mentioned is it going to be a reality because we'll have the, a, a second incidence. That up to today, the families are not satisfied. How far are we sure that this one, they will, they will be able to satisfy the people? The Cameroonians will keep on languishing in difficulties. If an army base is put there, what is the next, next happening that will be there? The people will suffer more. Those who are Anglophones know what the presence of the army means to them. They cannot claim that the presence of the army means their security. You, you are more in danger when they are nearer to you. And so we will be thinking that the government should be more serious in what they are doing and to make Cameroonians to feel that at every time they take a decision, it is for the good of the citizens. Manga Venashu, so you in adding to Mr. Weber's point, you are of the fact that, yes, uh, there are possible consequences of this incident in Gambo. Yes, Vanessa, possible consequences of uh, the incident to Cameroon. You know, what happened in Garbo village on the night breaking 13th of February to 14th of February 2020 became an international, you know, an, an international incident because almost it touched every other part of the world. People spoke about this incident because when we listen to the number of those who were killed, children who were killed, women, pregnant women who were killed, the government of Cameroon actually, as usual, came out when government ministers came out to defend the act saying uh, only five people died and they died out of, you know, the, the first report that came from the Ministry of Communication was that the, 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 there was a fight exchange and, you know, since Gabu, they say it is an area where they stocked fuel, that, uh, you know, counterfeit fuel that comes in from a foreign country, that is where they stocked it and in the course of that exchange, it caught fire and burned down some houses. That is the, the, the information they gave us. But then, just a few, around few hours after the incident of one or two days, Human Rights Watch came out with a report and they claim, I say claim, they came out clearly saying they have video footages of what happened in Garbo, satellite images of what happened in Garbo. And everybody knew that this is where the whole thing lied. But then the government was giving us another issue. Now, the government has, is coming back now to tell us that, no, this is what happened. The military are responsible. Vanessa, this is the second incident that the Cameroon government is coming back, you know, like somebody says, coming back to their vomit. The, the consequences of this to Cameroon is the credibility of Cameroon in the international scene is rubbished in mud completely. Because nobody takes Cameroon government now for anything serious. If when it comes to killing citizens of, of your own country, your own military, and you are unable to stand up and give out what happened, if that came from, foreign, from, uh, from foreigners, could Cameroon government account for them? Is this government able to account for the citizens that they, they are ruling? And it pushes any other person to conclude that what is happening even in the north, the information we are having is fake. Because if you have, we have to study it keenly, it may be more than what we have. So the credibility of this country at international level 
is completely rubbished. They don't, they cannot even stand and talk. Now, those international, those non-governmental organizations, the international organizations that we are at the forefront asking the government to bring, uh, to, to be accountable for this, um, uh, for this massacre, what should they do? They stand a better position of suing the government of Cameroon. Because if we listen to names, to, 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 to words that government ministers gave to these international organizations, to civil society activists, we want them to ask the question, is there any coordination in the way this government is run? Is it that any other person sits anywhere and decides on what to do? And there is this, impl this impression that they have given to Cameroon government. The image people have about Cameroon government now is anybody sits and decides to, to defend the government any way you can defend it, even if you don't have any information in your hand, talk about the government. Because we understand that if you want to be on the good books of those who rule this oh, country, rule this defend, country. The go defend the government. Even if you are wrong, defend the government. And I think the credibility of this country is at stake. And it will take time. That for, for, for the government of Cameroon to wipe off such type of negative, you know, just have a negative image now that the world has. Because if Human Rights Watch, Vanessa, remember when the 20, uh, 2018 presidential elections took place here in Cameroon? Cameroon, a minister in Cameroon announced the presence of, uh, of, of, an, of uh, an international non governmental organization that, 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 that came to supervise elections. Two days, I wasn't even up to two days, in less than 24 yes. hours, that very international organization came out that they did not send any supervisor, any, any, any uh, supervisor in Cameroon to supervise the presidential election. Whereas they, these, super, these supposed supervisors were received at the state uh, uh, media and they came out clearly. So the, the, the credibility of this country is something that the, 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 the regime will have to work for for some time, Vanessa. All right. Question number two: Should responsibility for the killings be borne by only the military? Mr. Weber, you said no. So, if no, by who then? We are all aware that those who took who did the act, we are simply executing orders. And if orders were given in Cameroon, we know that is a long chain. Because we always say, with high instructions from. The hierarchy and the hierarchy keeps on moving up until we reach the summit. We believe that if President Pobia is the head of the military in Cameroon, the orders must have left from him. And they left from him from the day he stood in the airport and declared war. And so, if the massacre has taken place, it starts from him who declared the war. Immediately, we leave from there, we go down to the Minister of Defense who sent the people to the field. And from the Minister, we go down to his generals, the governor, the SGO the deal right to the phone of Ntumbo because the phone when he came out he did not speak for his people the phone came out to defend the government of Cameroon we makes him part of the chain and so we will not say that the military alone should be it why should the military be alone the person who was sent there was on mission and there was a mission order which was signed and we are told it was signed on the 22nd on the on the 12th and on the 13th, they, they left in the night from, 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 from Tumbo to go down to Ngarbo to execute. And so those guys have executed the orders that came from above. If they went on the field and they did what they did, the person who sent them is supposed to assume the, the, responsibility. the responsibility. And so it is a whole chain that has to be taken. When we look at those things happening there, we ask so many questions. That we are talking about a professional army. The army that we have been repeatedly reminded that it is professional. And that on the field, they discover, like they claim, that by accident, they had killed women and kids. And the first thing that comes to a professional military officer's head is that they should cover it up by setting fire and to claim that there was an explosion. And that the very professional military officer should be able to fake a report. How professional then is the army? We ask those questions because... This is the these are the consequences. The consequences are coming up now, and we are obliged to hold everybody accountable at his or her own level. It is short, you understand that when the commission left to go down for the investigation, they had to start from Bermenda. The commission was met in Yaoundé, headed by the person who was in charge of SET. You know what is called SET in Cameroon. It's the biggest torture center in the country. Mm. He was a person at the head, and they had to stop in Bermenda, from Bermenda to Kumu, from Kumu to Nkame, from Kambe down to Ndu to, to Mbo, Ngarbo. And so, seeing the, the, that change shows who are those who are involved, it, it tells us who are the people who are involved in the, in the whole thing. And so, they should all be held accountable. It should not be the, the, the question of the military alone. 
Manga Vena shows Mr. Weber has just named a chain of those who should be held for this uh, uh, massacre and uh, you're of the fact that it is not only the military that should be blamed. So, who then? Vanessa, Cameroon army has been, you know, portrayed as a very professional army, even at the level of the continent. You know, Cameroon is cited as that country that has a professional, well professional and equipped military. There is no doubt that Cameroon has a very sophisticated uh, a, a means of, uh, of inquiry. There is no doubt that Cameroon uh, military is able to go through. We are within Cameroon. And if within Cameroon, Cameroon military cannot find out facts about what is happening in, within her territory. I doubt if we were to face a foreign, um, a, a, a foreign country, how it would look, look, uh, look like. If we can operate, if Cameroon military can operate with the aid of civilians, because they said there are close to 10 uh, vigilante members who were part of that uh, uh, operation. operation. Yes, the question I tend to ask is, what are we trying to do? Remember, the government of Cameroon has been, you know, saying that there are armed, uh, that there are armed men in the field. And when they talk of armed men in the field, everybody tends to focus about only the, ses uh, the secessionists, fighters. yes, these amber fighters. Whereas the vigilante groups, are, they, 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 there are every indication that they have been working with the military because they went down into this uh, operation with them. And now you will not tell me that the military is going with guns and then you collect these vigilante members and they go there without any arm, without any weapon, because they were going out with the hope that they may face separatist fighters. And if they face them, it is an exchange of battle. And I don't think that you will go there with your stick or your, or your machete to face somebody who has a gun directly in front of you. So what I was, when, when, I, when I read this question, I was saying that the responsibility of this massacre should not rest only on the military. It should go right down to those vigilante groups that are concerned in it. Vigilante groups in this crisis have been misused. Up in the, in, the, in the far north region with the Boko Haram, do you see that the way they have been used, they have been very, very normal, normally, uh, you know, organized. But the one in this crisis has been to put the people against them, their very brothers and sisters, so that the army can penetrate them. And that is why the, these vigilante groups were able to move down to Ngarbu and carry out this act alongside the military officers who were with them. But I think that if, like he says, if we have to follow the chain that, 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 that the information or the order came from, every other person who has something to say would be, I, I'm talking especially like the governor of the Northwest region. Let us keep those who are in Yaoundé. They never went to Ngarbu, although they gave out information that could so sound like eyewitnesses. But the governor of the Northwest region who went to Ngarbu, the SDO of, uh, of, 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 uh, of Ndonga Mantung who went down there, the DO of Nkambi who went down there. I remember when the governor went there, he told the people that it was the Amber Boys who came and killed your people. I mean, a governor who was not even there, a governor who came some days after, he was telling them what happened. Did he, was he there? Did he see them killing them? They go, when, when the SDO came, the SDO reached there and the phone of Garbu, like he says, the, the phone of Garbu gave a very well detailed itinerary of the, 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 of, of the military. Oh, the military. They came past Garbu 1, went to Garbu 2 and Garbu 3. Before on coming down, that's when they discovered that they had burned down. The, was he moving there with the military? Was he there with the military? Or was he informed about the military itinerary? What, what, what information did he have? Remember, it was at night. So I think that if we have to bring in these people, bring in the vigilantes, bring in this, uh, the, the, uh, uh, this uh, phone, the, mm -hmm. they would be able to tell us what really, how it happened, because they are well informed about the incident, and they should also be included. Let's not only punish, punish the military, because the military, you know, there's this thing that, 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 that takes place in the military. Once a command is given, you execute. You don't ask why. You have a gun and they say, shoot, you shoot. So they, they, they simply told the boys, go there and kill, and they went there and killed. So the responsibility should extend to whosoever had to accompany that command, Vanessa. As a reminder, the Human Rights Watch uh, came out uh, in their report, said they had satellite images concerning this massacre. So let's not forget that there are evidence of all what took place. The third question, I will begin with you, Manke Venashus. You said uh, you accepted the fact that this act is an eye-opener for other human rights abuses in the ongoing Anglophone crisis. Yes, Vanessa. When Mr. Wuba was speaking, he cited the issue of um, the, 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 the woman who was killed. We, you know, women were killed with children at Babanki. We had this, uh, this uh, one-month-old baby 
who was assassinated in Moyoka, the child's name was uh, Martha. We have some other cases in, uh, in Batibo where corpses were killed and burned. There are other human, abu uh, uh, human rights abuses like rape, like killings that have been going on in, 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 within this crisis. And once it happens, the first conclusion that the first, uh, you know, condemnation is given, we say it is the Amber Boys. We are not saying that the Amber Boys are not committing atrocities. Of course, they are committing them and they continue to commit them. But I think that what happened in Garbo and the way the report that came out and the reaction of the head of state, I think that if we should take such other, such other uh, uh, abuses like the ones we have cited and uh, a similar commission, if not the same commission, works on the field. I think that it would be able to indicate to us that this is not what we have. The, the, the image of the crisis that we have would be completely different. I think that this very commission, and remember the commission was quite broad based. It was not only limited to maybe members of government. It should go down to the field and let us know what is happening in this crisis because it will be deeper than what we think. It will be deeper than what we have been told that has been happening. Vanessa, I remember up to you today, nobody knows the whereabouts of the deal of Batibo, that's the first person who was kidnapped on the 11th of February. When he was kidnapped, we learned about his death only when the, the, the then Prime Minister, uh, Philemon Yang, was uh, talking about the crisis and he said the deal who died. Whereas Cameroonian knew that he was kidnapped and kidnapped, he went like that. Nobody knew about him. So I think it's high time that the very investigative team should go down again to the field to find out what happened with all. I think that we will get the real situation, the, the real face of this crisis, Vanessa. Mr. Weber, you uh categorically supported, uh, you support the fact that it is an eye-opener for other human rights abuses. And in your second point, you highlighted a number of such incidences. Yeah, we will be making a, a play here on the studio. It will go saying that there is, it is not an eye-opener. It is a clear eye-opener. The unfortunate thing is that despite the fact it's an eye-opener, the very thing is con continuing in the field on a daily, daily basis. Now, as we are speaking, the very thing is happening. We noticed that when we had the Pinyin ma massacre, boys were rounded up in the building and all were assassinated. And they played over it, used the, the chief of the village, who behaved like the one on Garbo, and they told all types of stories and it ended. We look at what happened in Batibo. What happened last week in Libyalim? We find that property is destroyed. Homes are burnt down. And after that, you don't find it appear in any news in the country. You find a degree of complicity. Or if there is no comp complicity, there is some subtle tightening of the press that they are unable to cover up and present to the people that we are sitting like this. There's something happening behind it. Unfortunately, the one on Garbo was something that called the attention of the whole world. And with international pressure, we have had the result. Maybe Human Rights Watch, the UN, and all those people, they have all the details. They know every what happened detail by detail. And it shows that if they have also been silent, they have put no pressure for those ones. It looks like some complicity. And now that this one, they have put pressure and the results are out, I think it counts back to themselves, particularly the UN, that is solely responsible for everything that's passing in the world, that they should put pressure so that they should give a detailed account of what has happened in the various parts of the Northwest and the Southwest, where people are missing and unaccountable for, where people have been killed, and after killing, they are burnt so that we cannot identify and know whether they were shot or not. There are people who were killed in the very early days and buried in mass graves. We only heard that, and nobody has investigated to find out how many were buried. We don't have the story up to today. And so I think that it is time to dig into many other things. And believing that this time around, the government or the head of state will remain a person who is a crusader for the truth, like he has done this time, that he forces and they bring out a report. Because other reports have never been given. And expecting that when this result will come out, they are going to help us to advance. Because unfortunately for us today, things are not advancing. Why? Most of the time, it is the cat that is placed before the horse. And we have never seen any cat pulling the horse. Because we are talking of reconstruction already. Reconstruction. Why they are burning other villages. Why they are destroying and killing more people. And we are talking of reconstruction. After all these things, we were supposed to go to reconciliation. But everything is juxtaposed or there is a, some sort of intentional maneuver so that peace and lasting peace should not reign in the Northwest and the Southwest regions. 
Mr. Weber, let us take this last question. You said, yes, there is uh, something wrong with the government form of communication concerning this uh, crisis plaguing the Northwest and the Southwest regions. Yeah, we, we are all witnesses to what our government ministers have been doing as far as communication is concerned. When this massacre took place on the night of the 13th, breaking 14th of February, February. the Feast of St. Valentine, it took the government bench four days. It was till the 18th. That we hate a word from them. After such an incident, it takes the state four days to communicate to the, to the citizens that this is what has happened somewhere. And what pushed them to communicate? It was because there was already communication coming right from the international community. They were only forced to. To them, they waved the hand and said it meant nothing. This, that's the problem with communication because it should be apt, it should be prompt. People should be informed on time. Despite that, when they did that, it came from the, the, the military spokesperson. The captain in question, when he spoke, he waved everything. It meant nothing to him. And he declared there were five people who were killed. When the minister of defense came up, he concorded with the, with the five. Eventually, the bishop of Kumbu came up with a different figure of 22. Human rights world came up with a different figure. And when the figure started conflicting, showing that the government is not communicating well because these people were opposing, mm -hmm. they were obliged to go down to the field. Up to today, they have not given us the figure. They want to go, up and, uh, go back and exhume. When they will exhume, they will come out with another figure. When you look at the various dates they are giving, you find that the communicator that came out signed by Ferdinand Gongo talks of the commission being created on the 17th. Meanwhile, the government spoke for the first time but on the 18th. It is contradictory. That's communication. And it counters what the Minister of, of Defense had said. The Minister had talked of the commission on the 27th. Now, when you find that kakufuni around communication, you find that what is eating deep in the fabric is what? The intention to deform and disinform the Cameroonians. The intention is not to communicate what is the truth. And so, when the truth lacks, we shall never be served because we are told that only the truth shall set us free. Set us free. Manga Venashus, you have the same point. So does it mean that government reaction should not be trusted in a few seconds? From every indication, from what they have been sh t telling us, it is clear that when they give it, let's doubt first before we take it. We are talking about communication, especially during crisis period. Vanessa, I just tip a bit into this uh, ongoing crisis. When the Prime Minister went over to the Northwest region, he told Cameroonians open, and that's what Cameroonians were waiting for, that the head of state is ready to talk with Cameroonians on all bases, even with the state form of the state, except cessation. That is what the Prime Minister said. Just a few days after, the Minister, of the Minister of Territorial Administration came out with his own version and said the form of state is not negotiable with any other person. We, we tend to find out, is the Prime Minister talking about his own different form of Cameroon and the Minister of Territorial Administration talking about his own different form of communication? Now, when this crisis, when this uh, incident happened in, uh, at Ngarbu, we got the Minister of Communication, the Minister of Territorial Administration, the, 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 the person in charge of communication at the Ministry of Defense, they were all communicating. And we, we, we tend to find out to ask, must we communicate what we don't know? If in a normal situation, in a normal government, they would have been preferable to make the announcement that this is what has happened in Garbu and in the due course, tell Cameroonians that we are looking into what will happen. If the government informed Cameroonians first and then telling them that we are going to go in to find out what really happened, Cameroonians would have understood. But when they wait and the information comes from foreign uh, bodies, I stand the chance to say that it was the pressure that mounted on them and then they came out with such an information to let the world know that they have also communicated. But what was their communication? They gave about five people who died. Whereas the Bishop of Kumu, like he said, when he came out with names of those who died already, we were already talking of more than 20, of, of all, up to 22 people who died. So there is something wrong with communication that those in charge of uh, a communication department in our ministries, in our government, they need to sit up. If not, then they will lead this government into the very other side that they will not want to, to stand at, uh, Vanessa. 
Thank you very much, Mange Venashius, for coming on to you, Mr. Biba. It has been a pleasure having people tonight. Unfortunately, uh, we are short of time, but there is a lot to discuss, so just stay tuned to DBS Television because tomorrow will be another time for us to discuss many other issues. Until we meet again, do stay blessed, and of course, keep watching DBS Television.